Today, we're talking about an exciting new tool to create wikis or knowledge bases for either your customers or your internal team. Hey everybody, I'm Dave from Profitable Tools, where I review software to help you grow your business. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to get notified when new videos like this one come out. Today, we are talking about ArchB. All right, so here we are in the back end of ArchB. I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the user interface and then we'll get a little deeper into some of the functionality. But honestly, this is about creating documents and then sharing them with your teammates and then sharing them publicly with your customers. So I think you're gonna understand the platform pretty quickly. Over here on the left, you can see the name of my workspace is Client Amp. That's the digital marketing agency that I work for. And then down below, we have document spaces. I believe that's what they call them here. I can add a new one here. Yep. It's called the document space by hitting this plus button. And let's go ahead and add a new one. We'll call it demo and I'll hit add space. All right, so now I've got a document space right here called demo. By default, you get one called general. Then down here, we have templates and archive. These are other types of document spaces that are created by default, but they have a little bit different functionality built into them. So templates, just like they sound like, are basically template documents that you can add. Now you can also create your own templates, but let's see what they give us here. Uh, let's see, let's go down here to this project retrospective. I can click on this to preview what it's gonna look like. You can see it's just basically some headlines with a little body copy and some bulleted text. If I wanted to use this template, I can click this blue button and then it goes ahead and creates the document right here. Now it put it inside of the templates document space, which isn't necessarily the most intuitive thing to me. I think it would be better if they popped up a window and said, which document space would you like to add this template to? However, it is fairly easy to move. Just click on the three dots over here and choose move to another space. You can see I'm moving the project retrospective to, and then I can select a space over here. I'll go ahead and choose my demo space and then hit move to demo. Now, if I'm on the demo space, I can see my project retrospective. If I want to open it up, there we go. I can start to edit it. Now, the editor is actually pretty easy to use. It's got all the functionality that you would expect, like, uh, actually what you're seeing there is Grammarly, so ignore that. It doesn't have that spell checker built in. Uh, but let's say I wanted to change the color of this text. I can select it, go over to the color dropper here, and maybe I'll make it purple. Now, one thing you might notice right out of the gates is that there's not a hex code selector for the color. So if it's very important to you to have, say, branded colors, well, that might be a little bit more difficult when you're highlighting text. It does have the ability to highlight text as well. Let's go ahead and highlight this where it says talk here, and I'm gonna go over to this little drop and that highlights it. You can see there's this little blue background. Now, I don't know of any way to change the color of the highlight. I think that would be uh, something that's nice to do, hopefully a feature that they can add down the road. But as you can see, there's bulleted lists. We've got headlines. I can change this to be a different type of headline. Right now it's an H2. I can make it an H3 or an H1 if I would like. We can also add a quote. I'll go ahead and select this text and choose the little quote icon. You can see it, it indents it as though it is a quote. Then of course you can add hyperlinks. Let's go ahead and select some text and turn it into a link. Let's link this up to google.com. And there we go, we've just added a link to the doc. All right, so very straightforward editor. If you've used any sort of online editor, they actually compared it to Medium in their documents. But if you've used you know, WordPress's backend, Squarespace, anything like that, you're gonna be right at home editing a document inside of ArchBee. There's several other interesting features of the editor and we'll come back to those a little bit later. But first I wanna continue through the tour of the platform here. So once again, we are inside of the client amp workspace and inside of that workspace, we have the demo document space. Now, as you might presume, the document space can hold more than one document. So I could add another doc up here and maybe you're getting the picture here, but if not, let me clarify. You could group together all of your articles that are about a particular subject. So let's say you have some standard operating procedures for how you send out your email marketing newsletter. Maybe you send it out each week and you want someone to be able to look at these documents and basically train themselves on how to work for your company. Well, you'd be able to put together three or four different articles here or really as many as you want and then share a link directly to this document space with your employee. 
Documents can have sub-documents. You can see I can add a document right here and it goes underneath. And maybe I want to move this around. It's very easy to drag and drop and reorganize things. If I click the three dots over here, you'll see you have the options to clone or clone with children as well as archive. So you're basically removing it without fully deleting it. Or if you're sure you want to delete it, you can delete it with the children. Now, let's get back to cloning and cloning with children here. What does that mean? Well, cloning is just going to clone the primary document and cloning with children will clone any sub document that are nested underneath. Now you might notice that you can actually nest again here. So I can continue, I believe, to an unlimited number of nesting. You can see now I've got five different sublevels. That's a little ridiculous. I don't think most people are gonna need more than one or two, but it is there if you have very complex documentation. Maybe you're making uh, API documentation. That's a really good use case for a platform like this. You might have several different levels of nesting that are necessary. Now when you finish your document space and you're ready to share it with the world, you can go over here to the document space, click on the three little dots, and that's going to open up your space settings. Here you can change the space name and actually make it public. You can see when I do this, I've got a URL right down here. If you're not happy with the URL, of course, you can head over to the hosting tab here, and this is where you set up the C name that you get with your account. Just enter in the subdomain you want the document space to be on, and then create a C name record at your domain name registrar, point it over to host.archb.io, and you'll be good to go as soon as the DNS propagates. It's important to note here that they will create an SSL certificate for you and it'll automatically renew so you won't have to worry about sending off unsecured documents to your clients. There is a little bit of security available to you when you're sharing these public spaces. You can see over here on the public space security, the options are none, that is the default option, but you can add a general password if you wanna just share one password with everyone who's accessing this page, or you can create guest accounts so that everyone has their own account and they can log in to see those documents. Under public space UI, we can go ahead and give this a little bit of our company's branding. We can add our own title, change the accent color, upload a logo, and I really like this last part is that you can add menu links to the top of the page. Let's go ahead and show you what this looks like. All right, I just went ahead and added two top menu links here, one for Yahoo and one for Google. Now I just use these as demonstrations. There's no real reason you'd wanna to link to them. What you'd actually use this for is maybe to link to uh, your support. Like people are checking the knowledge base and they can't find their answer. Maybe you want them to uh, file an email with you or, or send off a ticket so that your support system can get back to them. You could link to that. That's just an idea of a use case here. All right, so let me show you what this looks like. We'll go ahead and copy the public URL here. We'll paste it in. And here you go, you can see that my document uh, is doesn't have much going on for it, but you can see my links at the top for Yahoo and Google. So I think that's actually a really nice touch that you can almost create your own little continuation of your website navigation, even when you leave and go off to a different platform. Space settings also have integrations with Google Analytics and Intercom. So these are important because you'd be able to integrate with Google Analytics to see how people are actually using your docs. And if you're using Intercom, you can actually have chat embedded right inside of your wiki or your knowledge base. Now I kind of skipped this at the beginning of the video, but you can have your own private notes right here. You can see this is outside of my workspace. I can add my own notes. So if I've got ideas I'm working on, I'm not ready to share them with the team yet, I could jot things down over here. And if I choose, I could of course move it over to my workspace. Now I can add an additional workspace if I get that add-on. So you actually kind of have three different workspaces you can move between, maybe your ideas, if you have some freelancing and then a company that you work for, you could easily move some stuff around. I think this is a really nicely thought out idea. Adding team members is really easy. Just go down here to this little carrot, hit that, go over to invite team. You'll be able to add your members right here. You can notice that there are different groups here. We've got super admins, administrators, and team members. I'm actually all three. Of course, I can add a new group if I wanted to limit access to a particular document space. Let me show you how that works back over in Archby. Let's go to our demo doc here. And if I open up those settings one more time, there's team access control right here. And you can see I have a little checkbox for whether I want people to be able to read, write, or both, and I'd be able to add different types of permissions here so that only certain members would have access to this space. All right, I'm really loving how this is working so far. It's very clean, simple, straightforward, feature rich, but not cumbersome and difficult to figure out. There's a few more editing features that I wanna show you that I think are, are kind of cool and really seal the deal. So let's head back into a document here. I'll go to an untitled document, and we've seen bulleted lists, we've seen numbered lists, or maybe I haven't shown you, but you get an idea of what that would look like. We can add checklists right here, so you can have a little to-do list for yourself if you'd like. We can add tables. 
And we can add what they call a mini tasker. Now, this is essentially a miniature project management system where we can see it says doing, testing, done. And we can add different items down here. So it's like a miniature Kanban board. I've added walk the dog here and I can move this amongst the different statuses. Now, that's definitely not going to replace your project management system, but it is a nice way to keep small tasks organized. Next, we can add images right here. It looks like a little Instagram icon. You can add an image URL or upload a file. You can resize the image right here with this little slider. And of course you can align it left, right, or center. Now it does have this option to click to go full screen with images. Now I think this is a nice touch, especially when you're embedding screenshots. If you're doing documentation of your app, you embed screenshots. Sometimes manufacturers do that and then it's too hard to actually see the screenshot or what it says. So I'm glad that this automatically defaults to a click to go full screen. You can do the same thing with video, but you can't upload your video here. You have to link to YouTube or Vimeo. So here's an embedded video. Now, if you're a developer, you're really going to love this next feature. It's the code embed. Now, you might be thinking, what's so special about code embedding? Well, look at all of these different languages that they support. Of course, we've got an unspecified language, but we've got JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, C, C Sharp. Uh, we can go through. There is a ton of different languages here. I would guess probably right around uh, 30 or 40 different languages that are supported. Let's go ahead and let's say I chose JavaScript and I entered in my JavaScript code here and I wanted to share that with my users or with my customers, well, there's a little copy button down in the corner so they would just be able to click the copy button and easily paste it over onto their website or whatever they're working on. But the fun doesn't end there for developers. The next two features are for you as well. With this little uh, triple dot here, you can add Swagger UI. Now, I'm not going to embarrass myself and pretend like I understand what any of this means, but it looks like it's pretty full featured. Uh, you know, I don't really know. I can't comment on this. And you know what? I got a feeling out there. Not a lot of people watching this channel are hardcore developers. So this might not really appeal to you as much. But knowing that it is there, it might be exciting to the developers that you work with. And here's the next feature for developers. And again, I'm in way over my head here. This is Graphi, QL, and Explore UI. I have no idea what this is, but I'm sure someone out there is going to be excited to see this little widget. It looks like it makes something that would otherwise be very complicated, uh, very easy to implement. What I do understand and I'm excited by is a change log. So if you have software and you want to add in what changes in a new version, you can add in a change log right here. So you can give this a title, let's say version 2.0. One, we can say what was added, what was fixed. There's all sorts of different options here. We can say improved, broken, or uh, known issues that have yet to be fixed. You could add them right here. Again, just very simple. You could add this in a Word document, but it's nice that they have everything formatted for you. The next feature is called a call out. So if there's some very important information you don't want people to miss, you can add it right here. You can see this would just stand out amongst the rest of the text. And now maybe not these widgets because they're very graphically intense, but if you can imagine a document that's full of text adding that call out is going to definitely bring it off the page a little bit. We can also add a world map so you can tag a specific location and then there is a divider here. Now I will say that this divider is one of the more ugly dividers I've seen. I'd prefer just a straight line but that is right there. As far as collaboration goes I haven't really spoken about that other than showing you the public URL. Of course you can share that URL directly with one of your team members but you can also add a chat right here so if you wanted to comment on what's going on with the document you'd be able to do that away from actually editing the document so that's a really nice feature. We can also do callouts on particular modules of the document. So for example, I've got this table right here I added earlier on. If I hit this little chat icon to the left, I'll be able to chat specifically about this table. So that makes it very easy to talk about a certain item inside of a document. We've also got focus mode. So if you want all distractions gone while you're writing, you can turn on focus mode. And we've also got read mode, which just hides all of these editing options, cleans up the document quite a bit so you can see what what it's going to look like when you share it with your teammates or share that public URL. The three dots over here open up the document settings, which are going to allow you to be able to ping a team member to say, hey, take a look at this doc real quick. You can, of course, get the share link right here as well. You can tag it so you can easily sort through your docs later. You can see a list of revisions. We can preview the table of contents. Now, this is going to go based on the headings that you've already added. Now, I haven't got any headings in this document right now, so it's empty, but if you wanted to add that, it would work very similar to what Google Docs does. And then we've got the ability to export our documents as either Markdown, PDF, or PDF with meta info. 
All right, and the last feature I want to show you is the ability to add diagrams. I think this is really cool. It's going to excite a lot of people. It's basically the ability to do mind mapping right inside of ArchBee. So we've got all these shapes up here that we can go ahead and add. Let's go ahead and add this rectangle right here, and I'll go ahead and title this. Then I'll go ahead and add another item over here, except this time I'm going to choose this magnifying glass, which is going to allow me to search for different APIs or SaaS companies. I'm going to grab the icon for active campaign. We'll just drop it in right here. Now let's connect these two up with a line. Now you can see step one connects up to active campaign. You get the idea. You could actually build out a sales funnel in here. You could do any sort of mind mapping that you want. Uh, really, really cool extra feature that's kind of bundled inside of this editor. So checking their change log on their website, it looks like Archbee launched in June of 2019, which means it's not even a year old yet. They have certainly completed a lot of features in that time. And you know what? In my testing, they all were fairly reliable. I did have a little bit of trouble in really deep editing, copying, and pasting inside of some longer text documents. And those are things that maybe just take a little bit of getting used to how the editor formats different sections. But by and large, it was really easy and intuitive to learn. I didn't have to spend a whole day mastering the platform. Everything kind of just worked how I expected it to. And that says a lot about the future of the platform when they get it right so early on. Archbee is kind of a slam dunk for me. If you're looking for a way to create wikis or knowledge bases, even just for internal training, I think that Archbee is a really good solution here. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a 9.3.